Hello folks and welcome back to The Plot. The sun has just come out as I've hit record. Oh, perfectly on cue. Now, the plans have already gone awry. I've <laughs> been up The Plot for about 10 minutes. Had a few things up my sleeve, a few plans. I got this. Look at the size of this. I bought a chunky, chunky 21mm socket for those scaffolding poles. It's got plenty of thread to get right on and get them undone. But I've not got the right bit. I've got a quarter inch ratchet and not a half inch. <laughs> Bloody hell. One of the allotment neighbours has just said he'll go and get his, which is amazing though. But I thought I'd whip round first before I get into today's video, which is trying to get stuff out into the ground. Just a few quick updates, a few quick updates. I can't help myself because it's actually been quite a long time. I think I was down here Monday and it's now Saturday. So I've been a little bit neglectful without even realising, I think. The news is mostly good, um, but it's just germination issues. This year, the tomatoes, these ones, they are now for the most part up in terms of I've got at least one plant of each of the varieties, but in each of these cells I sowed two seeds. So for example, the apero, we've got, uh, we do have the second one just starting to germinate there, but this is four seeds in here. These two cells, four seeds in here. I've got two there, that's good. Most of them have got at least one, which is really what I want. But there was one that, <laughs> one variety this year that I wanted to do in bulk, and that was the Roma. Look, I did, I did loads in here, and we've only got one germinated. The other tray of tomatoes is very similar. This is the one that drowned, and this compost has gone a bit weird. I don't think it liked becoming completely saturated. But we do have just about one variety of each, the black cherry. That one's missing, that's a shame. I do hope that comes up. Got about 500 black strawberry plants. <laughs> really do need to split those. But um, yeah, some funky germination there and still some funky germination on the flowers. Extremely, extremely funky germination on the spring onions. What is going on here? These have, all of these so cells have been sown two or three times now. Um, Different seed as well, that's the thing, where I've given a lot of these two goes on the old seed and then tell, okay, right, let's use some fresh seed, and they're still not coming up. Still no chilies, but the aubergines have done well, no cowslips up here. These sunflowers haven't popped, nor has this Tim's Taste of Paradise, which Audrey really kindly sent me. This is a tomato. Really hoping that one comes up soon. Beetroot, shocking, just appalling. Where are they all? That's beetroot, this is beetroot. This one I think has been maybe seven days now. There's two lines in here. I would expect to be seeing some very spotty germination. These peas look great up front, but if you look behind, it's not so good. Can you see in there? It's not so good. So uh, yeah, just a bit strange. Oh, these are the, the pro cut sunflowers. These ones are just starting, which is nice. Yeah, very strange. Up here as well, there was um, a few more I sowed, some giant leeks that have not come up, the marjoram's not come up, the all-year-round lettuce. Nothing, nothing at all. Not the end of the world, just a bit weird and not, not a problem I usually have. Have to do an update on the peppers. Absolutely stock still, pretty much. These guys, I think, are suffering definitely a bit of shock. We have had some grey weather, but we've also had some, some warm days. The overnight temperatures have been a little bit colder than forecast, but they're holding on. I did want to show you this. If you see this on your chili peppers, this is a good example here of a little bit of sunburn, a little bit of sun scorch. You get that kind of browning of the leaf. Not the end of the world. They're just going to have to, you know, they're toughening up, they're hardening off. You can see the sun's coming out now. It's really starting to warm up in the greenhouse very quickly. And they will get there. They will get there. They it's not uncommon for chili peppers when you first bring them out to take a little while to get used to their, their new environment, especially if they've only had little lights on them. Now outside we're looking gorgeously bare now all the broccoli is gone, that was in the last episode if you missed that. But I did want to just show you these, which I showed last episode as well. And this is more like it, isn't it? This is a JB crop. <laughs> Planted out these lettuce on a bit of a whim. They were, I think, the right size to go out, to be honest. But the slugs have arrived, they are looking absolutely battered. Absolutely sad. Not loving their life, are they? <laughs> I don't think these guys are long for this world, but you never know. You never know. They might toughen up and come back. But I, I can't say I'm hopeful. <laughs> First things I've planted out, is that a bad omen for the rest of the year? I don't think so. I don't think so. We'll get there. I'm just heading over to outside the polytunnel to show you a few things. But ah, oh, this cherry tree is just magical. Looking really, really nice. It's full of bees, 
and these lovely orange fiery tulips have come out to say hello as well. I have moved a few more things outside. The garlic tubs are now outside. They're looking a little bit stronger, a little bit healthier as well. I think they're probably preferring it out here. This one's quite good as well. Volunteer potato in there. And speaking of volunteer potatoes, they are everywhere this year. I'll show you those in a minute. But what I did want to show you is these onions. And if I do nothing else today, I'm going to get these onions planted out. They have needed to go out for a long time. The broad beans got a little bit droughty. Whoops, haven't been watering those enough this week. But yes, volunteer potatoes. You can see one there, big bit of sorrel. I don't know where that's come from, to be honest. I don't, maybe I did plant that, I don't remember it. But <laughs> there's potatoes popping up everywhere. Absolutely loads here. <laughs> this is just stuff that, <gasps> oh, look at this bindweed. This is just stuff that I didn't get last year. Oh, evil. Rhubarb has finally popped up, starting to say hello, looking quite magnificent. But yes, this, <laughs> this potato right on the edge of the bed. <laughs> and I imagine when I take up this, uh, this black matting, there's going to be a few more potatoes under there as well. Now I had plans to do the big planting out today or a big planting out session today. And potatoes were going to go out in the beds, but honestly, I don't know if that's worthwhile. There's loads of volunteers in here, which are probably gonna do that thing where volunteers just annoyingly, they grow much, much better. If you've not seen that happening to Tony. <laughs> it happens to him all the time. And over on these beds too, where I must say first in the least surprising thing I've ever seen, no carrot germination, <laughs> but there's quite a few spuds in here as well, there's like a line along there. So I think I'm gonna leave those. Maybe I'll take these ones out, to be honest, and just leave a little row of spuds in here. <laughs> there's one over here as well. And I don't, I, don't, I don't remember planting potatoes in here. I think these are from a really long time ago, maybe like two years back from the previous plot when they put potatoes in the ground. So there we go, a few updates. The peas are gonna go in this back one here. I just need the tools to get the scaffolding apart. And then if that goes to plan, I can get those out today as well. But let's start with the onions. Now we all know everyone in the gardening community loves and adores these container-wise seed trays because they are just the most robust. They're really, really solid, really heavy duty, and they're gonna last you for years and years. But I do have one problem with them, and that is that so far, I have not been able to find a dibber that matches the shape of these. What I really want to be able to do is come along with a dibber, the right shape for those modules, make my spacings, go all the way down the line, and then just pick up, plop, pick up, plop, pick up, plop. <laughs> it's what you see Charles Dowding doing, and you know that the Charles Dowding's container-wise trays, they are specifically, well, I'm not sure specifically, but the, the shape of those is perfect for just dibbing and then plopping out into holes, which is great. But those Charles Dowding seed cells are really, really small. Um, and for me, if I use those, they're just gonna get out. And I like those lettuce, they're gonna get eaten straight away, which is why I like to use the slightly bigger module trays. But it does mean when it comes to planting out, I don't wanna go around with a trowel, you know, on my hands and knees, digging up, every little hole for the onions. And then, you know, you get a slightly irregular shape. So after you've dug the hole and plopped your onions in, then you've got to go around with a bit of spent compost or mush up some soil with your hands to like firm it in. If there's someone out there who has the means to produce a dibber that will fit one of those cells, please get in touch. I will pay you, we can maybe like sort something out because I think there's a market for it, okay? Even if it's just like a little plastic thing that you could maybe 3D print and then just stick on to the end of a dibber or something like that, that would be ideal, wouldn't it? So here's the issue. Container-wise shaped module. Look at this perfectly formed Boxing Day sown onion seed. It doesn't go, it doesn't want to go in. I can push it in, but all of the soil is going to be, um, you know, kind of explode. It's going to fall to the bottom of this hole, which is good, but it just, it just doesn't feel right, you know? This is my dibber, it's a great dibber. I love the dibber, but, and even this, this is like a thick, quite a thick dibber, but it just doesn't work. I can kind of force it in, but I know, I bet, let's, let's look, right? This is gonna be the onion. Bottom left-hand corner of this bed. I'm pretty sure there's now a void 
So either I need to dip as I did and then put a bit of compost in the bottom and then smash it in and it's just not great. The alternative is I can try and kind of widen it out a little bit, you know, pop it around, give it a wiggle, but it's still just, you know, you get a little bit, I don't know if you can see, you get a little bit wide around the top, but the actual point, you can't get it. It's just a weird frustration that I've got and there's no way. I'm the first person that's ever encountered this or thought about it. So there must be someone out there who's cracked it, who's solved it. So if that's you, get in touch in the comments below. There must be a solution to this that's like really easy. And I think it would just make life so much easier <sighs> because I've got a lot of onions to plant out. They're looking really healthy. I've got beds to fill and it just feels like I'm missing a trick, you know? Look at this, look at this folks. What a sight this is. I'm so pleased that, I mean, this is the first bed now that's been properly kind of planted up on the allotment and I'm so sad, get out of here. Um, I'm so glad that it's one of these new raised beds I've put in. It just so happens to have been, like, it's just worked out this way. I didn't do it deliberately, but I'm really, really pleased. And I think it looks so good. I love these beds. I'm really glad that I've got those side supports in now so I don't have to kind of worry about it or anything and I'm just really pleased to have this planted up. We've got some carrots down the middle and some onions, which are very good companions for carrots. It's kind of traditional. I did it in the first year of growing actually, and um, it worked really well. My issue with carrots is always germination. If they germinate, I can normally get some, some medium sized, medium to small sized carrots going, but they just never seem to like to germinate for me. Um, Sometimes I use the boards to keep them moist. Sometimes I do just come down and water all the time. Just one of those things. Not a crop that I get on with particularly well, but onions are very similar, to be honest. Um, I don't, I'm not holding much hope for these because I have onion white rot on the plot. Whether or not it's in these beds, I'm not too sure. Last year I had a disaster with the onions because I planted them wrong, but we've got the Rinsberger and the red onion, red onion down the middle, red baron, sorry. And we've got a few Rinsberger left over, which I'll sneak into various places. I'm sure, but I must say, I'm quite exhausted. Not because of this, I mean, this was, this was fine. It would be easier with the dipper. I did find, actually, a random bit of wood that I've put somewhere, um, which slightly fit better the, the, the modules. Um, so that did speed things up a little bit, but you might have seen on the time-lapse, I had to do a lot of stopping and starting, sprinkling in little bits of compost here and there to, um, to fill the gaps a little bit over the top as well, because quite often if you you go to push it in, you just expose the roots at the top of the onion. So that's what I've been covering those up with. But what I meant to say, yes, very tired because halfway through doing this, or just after I started, one of my allotment neighbors said he had the right um, ratchet attachment for those scaffolding poles. And, <laughs> oh my goodness. These guys absolutely did not want to come apart. I think there was about eight eight, nine, 10 threads, something like that, that I had to get separated. Pfft, wow, wow, it was, it was really, really hard work. I'd spray it with a little bit of lubricant, let it soak in, give it a, you know, putting all my weight into this ratchet. And then uh, I think I could have done with like one of those big breaker bars, you know, to get the leverage, but 
We got there. My point is, we got there in the end, and we've got all of these scaffolding poles now, which are ready for me to actually use. I'm a little bit daunted about <laughs> getting them back in. Um, the reason I, I couldn't film it is because Mike was only down for a little while. He didn't want to leave all his socket set and stuff down here, which is very reasonable, so I had to do it in a quick rush. And, uh, well, <laughs> it wasn't much of a rush. I was rushing, but it was not quick. Let's put it that way, but we've got them free now and we can use them and that is the important thing. So the plan is very roughly to, uh, I've not got the details worked out just yet, but the gutter pee is almost perfectly in here. And what I'm thinking, one gutter here, another gutter there in succession, the, these two, which I've just put in very roughly for now. Another pole across the top, um, kind of attached together. I've just ordered some bits for my own ratchet so I can tighten them up. Um, and I'm sure I've got one lying around that will fit this perfectly. And then a series of bamboo canes, which will just reach up, well, kind of like, kind of like that, I suppose. Touch the cross beam, and then I can just put some netting on these poles and I'm hoping, having just this angle, this is leaning towards me, just a rough angle, I'm hoping the peas will dangle through on the inside. You see this sometimes. And that way, it should be much easier to pick and I won't have to go traipsing through the middle of the bed or anything like that. So I am feeling absolutely fantastic just because I've actually got these free. I know this one needs to come in a little bit. If you've got any suggestions about how to drive this into the ground, let me know because um, I think if I just start smashing it with a mallet or, or something like that. I do have a lump hammer. Okay, so the lump hammer is at home because of course it is. Oh yes, look at, look at that, look at that perfect fit. That is what I'm talking about. I'm getting very excited about this because like I was saying in the last episode, I hate faffing and if I can get this in, if I can get this in and attached, then it's just, it's just fantastic. I might have to move this, but I could probably get away with a couple of seasons of doing peas in here before having to rotate, or I might be able to just keep it going in here, so long as I keep them fed, because I know that they're a hungry one. But there's a bracket on there that I can raise up a little. I think both of these need to go in the ground a little bit more. Oh, yes, something has worked. Something has actually worked. Um, it's a shame, but I don't have the lump hammer. I don't think tapping these in is gonna be the best thing. And I think these tops will just kind of mushroom. They're in at the moment, just by me kind of driving it down. But um, any tips on that kind of thing would be appreciated. I know as well, for stability, it's quite common. And that's what this bracket is for. You get one going off at a diagonal. These are really heavy and I think, oh no, that's just clay. I thought it had concrete in. I think they're only heavy because they're full of like soil. I think it's very common to have like a bracer like this. But if I can drive them in a little bit more, I'm hoping I can negate the need for that because this is faff. This is what I would classify as faff. <laughs> Trying to drive it in at an angle might be tricky. Maybe it'll be worth doing, I don't know. But um, I'm questioning, I'm thinking, well, should I plant the peas now? Or should I wait until I've got this properly assembled? The peas do want to go out. The urge to plant the peas is almost overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really in the mood to like get stuff in the ground, get things out of the greenhouses, out of the polytunnel, and I'm really excited. I, I want to get them out and then sew them straight again, fill that gutter up again, because they can go in next door. But I think it's probably, pr is it prudent to wait? <laughs> oh, I can't decide, I keep going backwards and forwards. Should we get them out? Should we just, <laughs> let's plant them, let's plant them. It'll be fine, all I've got to do afterwards is slip in some bamboo canes near them, tie the netting to the bamboo canes. I've ordered some netting, um, especially kind of like for peas and beans, um, and that should be here next week. So I don't want to wait too long. I think it's, 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 let's get them in, let's get them in. I do have a couple of concerns about planting them out at the moment, but then that's not really going to be alleviated by waiting, to be honest. My concerns are mainly foxes coming in and digging this up. Just going to try and carve out a little place for them in here. This has got loads of manure on it, as you can see. So I'm hoping this will be plenty rich for them. Not sure there's a better tool for this, but I thought, let's use the side of the rake. I'm really excited to be doing full-size peas. I've always kind of wimped out a little bit and only done dwarfing varieties because, as I've said, faff, it's 
not my favorite. And I'll tell you what, I love doing these gutter peas because it's always trying to slide them out is a real moment of truth moment. <laughs> um, and you never quite know how it's gonna go. I think these will slip in quite nice and then I'll just kind of push this manure in around them. They've, their roots will be in contact with the soil so it's not like they're going straight into manure. Um, is that straight enough? Okay, moment of truth time. What I have on this end is just a bit of masking tape. It's not super effective but it does do the job and it's nice and easily removable. When it comes time to plant out, it's easy to just slip it off. <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous. Oh, it's difficult to get it sliding. You quite often have to kind of do it in chunks, break it up a little bit. There we go. Once you get it sliding, loosened up. I think that's okay. You've got to get the shake just right to get them to come out whilst also trying to minimise the root disturbance. Oh, it's not too bad. very 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 pleased with this one of the most satisfying ways to plant veg for sure and i mentioned that i was excited to grow these proper tall varieties but the other reason that i'm excited to do these varieties of course is hopefully I'll get a much bigger harvest one of the issues with those dwarfing peas is you just don't get that substantial a harvest this year i would really like it if i could actually like have enough peas to take home <laughs> for me. The peas always just get eaten as a snack on the allotment. So maybe this year with this entire bed given over for peas, which are properly tall and properly supported. Well, I'm hoping, here's hoping. I'm just gonna water these in very gently just to um, try and bed them in a little bit. I think they're okay. I don't think they need too much firming in. They've just kind of nestled into that little nook. There's a few bits sort of around here where the level could just be kind of built up next to it a little bit because when this starts to rain I don't want all the compost just washing off the uh, the plants and going into any little gaps so just a really gentle watering in to get these bedded in a little bit but if I really flooded this I think silver grey is so fine and and light that I think it would all kind of dissipate which is a little bit nerve-wracking yeah that seems fine no massive soil erosion or anything like that. There's a few little gaps where I had to split it up, which isn't ideal, but hopefully these will do really well. I think that's just about enough allotmenting for one day. Thank you ever so much for watching. An extra special thank you to all of my Chili Pepper tier patrons, Tony, Bill, Pam, Louise, Mel, Michael, Denise, Socks in the Garden, Andrew, Sarah, Dorcasaur, and Angela. Hopefully I'll see you again in the next one.